Hi and welcome. My name is Ayman Aitani. I'm a business growth specialist. I work with business owners to help them grow their business by helping them acquire customers and building business process for scale. I also advise government entities on running startup programs. Our topic today is about building a profitable business in the time of crisis. So with, with COVID, uh, the first few weeks, we saw many public announcements of businesses closing. I'm not saying closing their doors, waiting until the pandemic, I'm saying shuttering their business, it's, it's gone. So they, they declared that it's closed and they let everybody, everybody go. And then uh, a few months after that, even more and more businesses. And those are only a small fraction of what we heard about, those that were very public about it. There are many that have not been public and have closed their business. And that got me to think more about why, why so soon, why within weeks? Why couldn't the business survive weeks or a month or three months until they figure out what their next model is? And uh, this is the core theme of uh, the session we have uh, together today is how are we going to build a profitable business uh, that can survive a crisis? Um, any, for any questions you might have uh, on business growth, I'm happy to answer those on, on Instagram. And also next week, we're talking about the concept of why we wave goodbye during our Zoom calls. Uh, it's been something I've been noticing and I've came across a few, uh, a few articles recently about why, uh, we wave, uh, why we wave goodbye. So that is something definitely, definitely of, of, of interest and that's for the next week this time as well. Now, one of the key aspects of the business is the unit economics. So unit economics meaning it's the core of your business. So how much does it cost you to make the product or to service the customer? How much does it cost you to acquire the customer? And how much are you selling them for? So let's, let's, be very, uh, let's go with the very simple elements. Let's say you're selling a product for 100 dirhams and it costs you 15 dirhams to make and then it costs you in advertising another 10 dirhams to make, uh, 10 dirhams to acquire the customer. So that's 25 dirhams. And you're selling it for 100. So you, your unit economics are healthy. You have a 75 dirham difference, delta, spread, whatever, whatever you want to call it. That means your unit economics makes sense. A lot of businesses, uh, they are uh, in a pro incorrectly inspired by global models that say, burn cash now get the thousands of customers and then later on we'll figure out how to how to make money so what they do is they sell at a loss so that means if it costs them 15 dirhams to make and uh, uh, 10 dirhams to acquire the customer in order to compete they sell it at 20 dirhams so for every 25 dirhams they spend they're making 20 dirhams only so they're losing on every transaction so when you're losing money on every transaction, that means you don't have a business. It's a, it's, there's a, it's a faulty business model. It might work temporarily on certain promotions and things like this, but if the unit economics don't make sense and you add to that on top, the cost of the employees, the cost of the rent, the cost of internet, the cost of your licenses, uh, transportation, business development costs, you know, you have so many costs in a business. So that if you don't have a healthy unit economics and you add to that on top of it the additional costs, that means the only way your business survives is by external funding. External funding meaning the owner puts in money from his or her, or her own pocket, they borrow money from friends and family, or an investor comes in and puts in the money in the business. So when a, uh, when a crisis like COVID happens, the external money is no longer interested in supporting businesses and investing in businesses that are that have unit economics that are not profitable in unit economics so the investors are much less likely to give you to give your business money and friends and family because a lot of them might have lost their jobs they're worried about their future and so on so the amount of money they can give you is much less or dried up and uh, so the external money coming into the business will stop. So the time the business has to live is how much money it has in the bank from past money that it had, 
and how much it's spending every month on acquiring the customer, produ producing the product, uh, paying for all the expenses like salaries, rent, uh, uh, and so on. So if they have three months worth of money in the bank, in three months, if there's no extra money, the company has to let go of everybody and close down the service and email its customers saying we're out of business. If it has only a few weeks of money left, then a few weeks of money is what is left in the life of the business. So this is why the unit economics are very, very, very important. And COVID has raised awareness and cleaned up the market as well. So now a lot, the, the discussion before has been grow, 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 grow at all costs. Now it's more of how can I grow profitably? Growing profitably means my unit economics, how much it costs me to make and acquire the customer and selling it, it's profitable. Yes, I might not be profitable as a business as a whole because I'm growing, but my unit economics are healthy. That means I can grow profitably to, to, to reach a certain number. So that's the core differentiator of how you think about growing a business. Do we do it gradually, step by step? Or, or do we burn cash and hope that we reach a certain stage? And if we don't reach that stage, the whole business shuts down. This is why you see so many announcements of a business raised $2 million, $3 million, $10 million, and then within a certain amount of time, six months, eight months, a year or two, they're out of business and everybody's gone. So this is why uh, an aspect of this. And uh, this reminds me a lot of a discussion I had uh, with my dad early on in my business. I wanted to grow it so fast and I was running so hard, trying to do many things. And he was very clear saying, um, in Arabic it said, uh, so you need to go up the stairs one step at a time. You're trying to jump so many steps at the same time, you're gonna fall and chip your teeth. So this is always when I have discussions with founders, I go back to that initial discussion and I had with, with, uh, with uh, the advice I had from my dad saying, you, would, to get, you will get to the 10th floor, 11th floor, the floor that you want to get there, but you're going to have to pace yourself while you get there because you, if, you, if you go too fast and too hard, uh, you, will not, you will not make it. Now, uh, looking at the business model. So this all has to do with the business model, right? So... Uh, if you've decided in the beginning, I'm going to sell at this price and do it and so on. If you need to change your business now because it's not profitable, it's a tough decision, but you have to make it because your business will go. Will go. I, had, I had a discussion once with a founder. He was in transportation and he had different destinations across multiple cities. Some destinations are not profitable. So sending products from city A to city B, he loses money on that route. But in other cities... In other destinations, he's making money on those. He kept those cities, although I was telling him, look, you're down to six months of runway. That means in six months from today, with no external money, you will lose business. So let us start to cut costs. And I'm not saying cut costs, let go of staff. I'm saying, let's look at business, part of our business that is not profitable. And he said, no, because ego-wise, he didn't want to say publicly that we no longer service this route. He thought that it might, they would look very weak and they'd lose customers. And I was very clear saying, I'd rather you stop the, the bleeding now of this and have an honest discussion with, with, with your customer. Find them alternatives. We can, we can find in the market people who service these routes and you can send them that business. So you're not, you're not blocking them off completely, but you cannot continue to lose money on these routes. And unfortunately, a few months down the line, uh, these routes continue to bleed money from the company and the company no longer exists. So they had to let go of staff. They had to close their offices. There's nothing left of the company. So saving the, uh, if these routes were closed earlier, instead of having six months, they might have had nine months or 10 months of the business and they would have figured out a, a way to turn around the business. So don't be afraid to change how your business is working today and how, what you're charging and have the honest and clear discussion saying, look, we're losing money on these routes. We've been servicing you for X amount of time and we will continue to lose money with you over the next two weeks, three weeks until you find an alternative and we will help you find an alternative, something like this. The other part is doing tests. Part of finding a better ways to make money is to try a different service. Some of them will work, some, a lot of them won't, but you cannot know until you try them. So try the service, try it with, so um, 
in my company, what we've done is we have a service that we wanted to launch. And we knew it would work, but we needed the first two or three customers to really figure out what they need. So what we did was we sold it at a loss. So this was a business decision. That because what we were doing with this is we're trying to figure out the model. So we're not promoting it widely. We're not getting hundreds of thousands of customers. We're losing on one or two or three customers until we figure out the proper model that works. And then we'll make it available publicly at a much higher cost that is profitable. So that's what I mean about performing tests. So uh, when you look at profitability of certain things, if it's under a test, a controlled test, that uh, can help you with, with the business. Another aspect is customer feedback. So I feel a lot of the decisions made in businesses are done based on personal, uh, a personal inclination. So it's the owner, a few other people in the business, and a few other managers running it. It's their personal aspect. And then, but they don't go out and talk to their customers. And talking to customers, and many of the founders, they don't feel comfortable talking to customers. It's psychological, it's introversion. There are many things, but uh, talking to customers is a great way to get what you need, but you need thick skin. This is what they're trying to avoid. They don't want to hear, this is missing in your app. I'm able to do this with your competitor. I'm able, I'm able to, uh, I can't do this, I can't do that. That aspect, when they don't do that, what happens is the customers will leave. They will decide on leaving. They will go to the customer, but you won't know why they left. Or even if they're with you, you know what you're good at, but you don't know really why they're there with you and what they would recommend. So that aspect of talking to customers, it could be over calls, it could be over WhatsApp, it could be email, it could be satisfaction surveys. Uh, the customer will tell you, the customer will tell you what they don't like. And that's something that you need to really look for, uh, what, what really uh, is going on because customers leave. I mean, how many times, take it on a personal example, how many times have you been at the restaurant and then you're complaining about the food. So the person in front of you with your friend, you're complaining about the, how terrible the food is. And then you see the restaurant manager comes in and they ask because they want to ask, they don't care really. They ask, is everything, you know, how's everything going? And then you turn around, you smile and say, it's going okay. You don't even tell them about the bad food that you had. As soon as they go, you continue that discussion. It's because the way they asked is just, you know, look, I'm here to ask, it's on my KPIs, I need to, you know, fill in a checklist. I don't really care about, about, about what it is. So once they have that caring aspect to really know the business, they will point out that the food was not good and what specific plate. This way, the next place that you do, you know that if you have so many complaints in that direction, you need that. And that's only done by getting feedback from your customers. Um, one of the common mistakes is related to relying on investment as a way for the first round, second round, third round, or fourth round. So not being profitable until you raise three times. That is a very difficult business model to sustain. Very difficult. Because that means you're going to have to hit certain targets every time. You're going to have to win over investors every time. And you're losing parts of your business every time to reach that stage. And you're still not profitable. So uh, if I go back to the unit economics aspect that we mentioned in the beginning, if you have strong unit economics, you'll be able to have a healthier business and have a much better discussion with, your, with the investors. And um, all we do as founders is work on problems to fix. That's all we do. It took me years to figure it out. I always used to complain saying that at night I said, okay, now I'm starting my real work. And, and I was mistaken because during the day I was always busy fixing problems. And then at night when everybody else is gone, I can, I'd start to work on the, on the things I wanted to work on. And that I thought it was real work. It took me years to figure out that actually my real work is what I did during the day is turning, is fixing problems. Because as founders, our role is to fix all, everything is our fault. And we have to fix all of the problems. We have to find the people to fix them. We have to find the solutions. We have to be involved in every different aspects of this. And so issues to fix, this is the core aspect of, of, of what we're doing. And it takes time to build it. If you can see all of these companies, they don't do it in a year or two. Those are the exception. Most companies that I've seen, there's a 10 year mark. There's something about this eight, nine, 10 year mark that changes the company. Uh, the accumulation of the years, the accumulation of problems, the accumulation of the market and some serendipity, but 
the 10 year mark has always been, I've seen businesses being able to really make a change during that time. So it takes time. So it's not a year or two, I'll open up the business. In a year or two, I have this big, nice house. I'm taking three vacations a year and so on. It, does, it doesn't work this way. One of the things, one of the hands-on things that I want to do during the, uh, during the call today is work on uh, building, the business, uh, building a business model and how to look at the cost structures. So what goes into the structure, cost structure and so on. So this is not a full financial model for you to raise money with, but this is thorough enough for you to understand how the business, how the business works what are your strong points of revenue, how, how you might be able to make money or lose money on what, what are certain risks that you're taking, what are certain costs that you haven't factored in, and so on. So one of the first aspects I'm going to look at is the product categories of what we sell. So what are the different aspects that we're selling? Uh, so here we're looking at different product categories and how much we're looking at that. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go straight into the Excel file. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat uh, uh, or in the Q and A. And, and I'll, of course, towards the end, I'll, I'll, I'll open up everything, uh, uh, all, of, all of the questions, uh, I'll open up for all of us to ask the questions uh, that we need. Now, um, I'll be sharing this spreadsheet. When you sign up to this, you've also signed up to being part of the mailing list where I send you this after the call. So I'll be sending you this and the recording of the session after the call. You'll be able to go through all this in all detail. You're able to do your own models. The way I have this structured is you have the one-time costs. So what are things that we pay for one time? And then what are ongoing things that you pay for depending on what you're producing and what you're selling? So let's look at uh, the items purchased and sold. So it could be a service or it could be a product. This is more towards products, but this could be also modeled for a service. So no matter how many SKUs you have, so no matter how many thousands of products you sell or services, at the end you have a handful of products that, can, that are really making the money. So here you'd look at what are the categories that I have? How many did, did I pay for? Or how, much, how many am I planning to pay for? So if you're looking at growing a certain part of your business, or if you're looking to do some calculations of what you have now. So category one of a product, I've paid for 10 items. The average cost is $20. My margin on this is 150%. So that's how much I can, I can, I can, I can, I can say, you know, I can make money on this when I sell it for $50. So this is what I'm looking at. It costs me 20 and I'm selling it for 50. This one costs me $50 and I'm selling it for 70 because I have a 40% margin, depending on how much you can really sell on this. So here you're looking at, how, much, how profitable this item is to sell and how many, how many of these have you sold? So, you know, not everything that you buy, you're able to sell. So if, you, if you're really looking at products, uh, depending on your business model, but likely you're going to have to have products before that you, you can sell them. So I haven't sold all of them. And then uh, here we're looking at, at what, the, what, the, what my costs. My costs is I paid $200 which is 10 items times 20 to get these items here. And I sold $500 worth of items. So that's eight times 50. That's not eight times 50. Um, sales value. I think there's something wrong here in the, in the formula. Actually, this should be, it should be this. There we go. which means how much I've sold. So uh, again, no, eight times, my bad, my bad. All right, so what I've, what I've paid for is $200, which is 10 items and, uh, and 20. And then what I've sold is eight, eight times 50 here. So this is how much, this is how much I've sold uh, these for. So see here, you're able to make a decent margin on, on some of the products. So the unit economics for these makes sense. So you're not losing money on any of these. 
Um, another aspect, if you're on a product basis, so if you're trying to sell from home or what it is that you're trying to, 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 to sell products, if you're selling products as a, retail, as a retailer, um, but if you're into services, this doesn't apply. But if you're selling products, you always have to assume a certain inventory damage. This is something commonly overlooked by founders. So assume a percentage of products that you have that are damaged. Damage meaning too much dust, water came and damaged them. Uh, when, when you were moving things out of it, you stepped on one of them and you knocked it over and you broke it. So there's always inventory damage. So that's something for you to factor in because that's, that's, that's a total loss uh, for you. So that's something for you to calculate. And then how much, here I'm, I'm making an assumption on how mu what percentage of items have been sold via a credit card and what percentage of items have been sold via cash and delivery. The reason being is you have transaction fees. So when you're selling on a credit card, you have a transaction fee, which is usually around 3.5%. So it depends on how many you're selling. So this, this is affected here. And this is also for, this is, you, you can also make, make the, your different assumptions here. So uh, when I pass this on to you, 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 can, you can do whatever you want with this. So, so this is where here you, you could say that actually, no, in my business, I don't sell a lot online. It's mostly cash and delivery. Or actually, no, I'm more on the 80, 80%, 80 there. And then the credit card transaction depends on what service you're using and how much they're charging you. But this is the uh, this is the 3.5 percent. So and the calculation here is done. Basically, you've paid transaction fees. So here you look at you've sold all of these. Uh, half of them is in online credit cards, and 3.5 percent is the fees. That's 24 dollars. 24 dollars. Then you have marketing costs. Uh, again, if you're in the services businesses, this might differ. Uh, so, you, you know, but even services businesses, you still pay digital ads, you still play, uh, pay for freelancers and writers. Other costs such as photographers, if, you know, uh, if you need models or not. So let's say you buy, you sell rings and you don't like how your fingers look, you need to get somebody, either a friend to do it for free or you need to pay somebody to, 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 to do this. So the, I'm just trying to get you to think here of costs that you have in your business that you need to factor in. And then... Uh, you need a mobile number for WhatsApp for business and calling others and so on. So how much, how much would that cost you? And then you have certain costs you have to factor in, such as office rent and rent storage, your staffing. So here I made assumptions that you're doing this from home. You, you could have uh, you could have your own and so on. So this is for you to make your assumptions on. And then how much will cost you to send up email communication? And I put a random number of miscellaneous aspects. So what what here what you would have is you'd look at my total costs per month are 2827 and my total revenue is 1377 that means i'm at a loss so this so that means i need to look again so my this means my business is a losing business i need to look again at this to say okay can i raise prices on these can i talk to my vendor to reduce the costs on this do i can i sell more what can i do to sell more and how did I need, really need to pay for, you know, 10 of these? Couldn't I have bought eight and still have one here? Because you have some money tied in inventory when you, when you have some items here that you haven't sold. So you bought 10, you only sold eight, so you have another two to sell. So this, and then you have the additional costs here. Do I really need the Photoshop model or can I, can I you know, can I bite on my insecurities and, and use my own hands if I'm a, for a hand model? Do I need a photographer or, or can I get a, my, my friend who has, she has a, a, a great camera and I, you know, I buy her coffee or lunch and, and she can come in and, and help me with the photography. So those are things you'd look at uh, 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 and reducing your costs for being able to have some form of net revenue per month. And then other things for you to look at from a one-time cost perspective uh, are the uh, things that you do from the beginning, like your logo, uh, your domain, your website, your email setup, you know, VAT licensing and things like this. So those are certain things for you to factor in into your, uh, to your costing. So this is, this is a rough direction for what the business would look like and how you would look at it. When I talk about unit economics, I'm looking at things like this, you know, how much does it cost you to make? How do you, how much do you sell it for? And, and what's your cost of acquisition? How, how much do you do in terms of advertising and marketing? So those are key aspects for you to build, to build your business. And we've covered most of them here. And I'll be sharing this Excel uh, with you 
for you to be able to do some of your experimentation on your own on some of your assumptions. So this can work for you or if you have a friend who, who's, looking, who's looking to do this. And if you have any questions or anything for me to answer, uh, uh, now, would be, uh, now, would be, now would be a good time. So the key aspect always to think about is the, uh, is the unit economics. How much money can you make from selling it and so on? Um, I know a lot of you, I've recognized some, some recurring names. Thank you, thank you for joining again, Sarah, Dr. Hanadi, uh, Raisas, thank you again for, uh, for coming in. Um, I know a lot of your, your businesses are on the services side, so we can, tackle, we can tackle the services aspect. So the advantage of having a services business, which, which one of the businesses I'm in, is we don't have the inventory problem. So we don't, we don't need cash beforehand to buy products and, and sleep on them and so on. So that's something that, uh, uh, that you're, at a, you're at an advantage uh, to from a services uh, business perspective. This advantage to that is services means you rely on people to do things in a certain way uh, and you have to do a lot of quality control. That's your disadvantage. So because a product is a product, if they take this from you, you know, whoever gives it to them, it's fine. At the end, it's, it's a product. It's a, it's a, it's a tangible physical product. When it comes to a service, it's, you have to have the quality control in place to make sure that, uh, that you're able to, 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 to cover this uh, and, and, to and, and to take care of that. Another aspect, a difficult aspect in the services business of yours is acquiring customers. Uh, you could run ad campaigns across Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can do some videos that would definitely help, but a lot of the, a lot of the work will come your way from referrals and referrals means you're out there, you're talking to people, um, you're reaching out also, you're asking for introductions, saying, you know, Sara, who can you introduce, you introduce me to this? Dr. Hanadi, who do, who do you think I should talk to with that? And Raisa, have you worked with somebody with this entity? Can you introduce me? So there's always that, uh, uh, that aspect of it. Um, for services, one of the other challenges for services is uh, custom work. If you're doing a lot of custom work, that also makes it very difficult to, to really grow the business properly and so on. So that's definitely an aspect that, that, that needs to work. Um, right, so your question about the dropshipping business. Um, let me tell you, let me show you the examples of a friend of mine. Um, she was based in the UAE, then she left uh, to, to, to London and it took her years to figure out the dropshipping business. So I had a discussion with her. We were out at a social event at somebody's wedding wedding celebration and we were talking and, and uh, you know, with me, I always look for business owners to find problems to fix. So that was my, that, that, that was my thing at the, that was what, what kept me busy during that uh, event. And uh, she was doing um, uh, uh, like purses and shirts and things like this. So very specific, uh, uh, like mid luxury types of items. And she was doing drop shipping. So the drop shipping you see on the internet and the ads that you run and people on YouTube and they show you this, they say, the mis what they sell you, which is wrong, is you find somebody in overseas in China, Malaysia, and, and somewhere in Asia that they manufacture this. And all you do is you put a website and you run ads in the UAE and then people buy it. So you don't, you don't do anything. People don't ask you anything. They see it, they pay for it. And then when, when they pay for it, an email goes to your Malaysian or Chinese manufacturer who, 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 who takes it, who packages it, and sends it to, to Sarah and the UAE who bought this. That's the dream that they sell you. And what she was telling me is she had to go through three to five different manufacturers in China and Malaysia and other countries to find the really good ones because her, you know, whoever bought, you send her, send her pictures of this is not what I bought. It's either a wrong product or poorly made or poorly packaged and so on. So a lot of this is not this quality that you, that you have, especially when it comes to clothing and, and purses and how you close them and what you do on the sides and the edges and the stitches and all of that detail. So she shared horror stories of three to five different drop shipping, drop shipping manufacturers that she had to work with and pay money and lose on until she found the one or two that, that can help do them. This is one. Two, uh, she struggled to get the marketing up and running to be able to get the customers to come to the website to buy. And three, when they're at the website, what they do is they go find you on social and they ask you, do you have this in blue? Do you have this in green? Do you deliver to me here? What's your exchange policy? Even if you communicate all of this, 
people are still going to ask you that. So the dropshipping business would work, but you need to have a full end-to-end -end part, which I feel is very difficult to achieve in the beginning. So if, if let's say, Raisa, you want to do this, on the, you want to get started with this, I'm going to make that assumption. What I would do is I would start with how much can I lose? Can I, can I pay for 10 items and keep them with me? I'll sell three, the other seven. If I cancel them, I'll give them away to friends and family. So come in with that mindset, saying I'm going to buy 10 of these. I'm going to try to sell as much as many as I can. And then from it, so you have them in your house or in your office or in your storage. You've packaged them. You know the product. They're good. You try to sell them online. You can ship them locally uh, in the UE through Kareem Box, Aramax, uh, uh, all sorts of, of, of last, mile, uh, last mile delivery. Uh, um, uh, that, that, that you can look to, to sell with. And then from that, you'll, you would have figured out the quality issues, the storage issues, the marketing issues, the customer support issues, the delivery issues, the returns. So once you figure that out, then you say, okay, I'm, I'm going to speak with my manufacturer. I like his or her quality. Now I want to see what I can get for 100 items or 200 items, what discounts can I get and so on. So that's how uh, the business might, might, might be able to, to, to change. What other questions might we have? Hi, Ayman, how are you? Thank you, Dr. Hanadi, how are you? Great, alhamdulillah. Thank How's you for everything? joining us again. Thank you so much. <laughs> I need this one. I this need file <laughs> seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> because what we what we studied in the business class was nothing. Uh, luckily, I came from a business family, so I, we got it in our genes. <laughs> so we have the basics of business, but we didn't know how it works. It's just like you know. We grow and listen to our grandparents, and that's it. That was the business plan that we follow. Um, less losses, but the struggle of the growth. Uh, I was not in rush to grow, by the way, because it's, uh, my degree grow came with the new degrees and certificates, and I was taking this step by step. Uh, what makes me really interested about the worksheet, like, you know, the Excel sheet you share, that yes, tracking the, the business or part of the business which is not working and just give it up, that was a struggle. That was a struggle because when you have too many degrees and too many certificates and you have passion to deliver everything, that's a tough uh, choice to do. But luckily, um, we start to do that one by one that, since the last year. So everything clarified. And I was not losing, but it was like, you know, consume my time. Uh, because you have to think, okay, I have this service. How can I advertise for it? How can I offer it for clients? And yet, it was not attracting that much of clients because it was a specific service. So uh, lately I give up, <laughs> I get, uh, I just put it away for now and I have my main services and these will be kept for those who are interested and they will have a specific uh, pathway of get the service. So I'm not going to sell it in cheap. Um, so uh, a couple of points that you brought up. So one, you know, you wishing having had it seven years ago. So yes, this is a lot of why I'm sharing all of these webinars and this fun and so on is I've made so many mistakes myself, and that's when, when I talk to other founders, within 10 minutes, I know the problem and the solution because, you know, we've all made mistakes along the way, and we figured it out. And uh, so, yes, uh, things like this can definitely, definitely help. The second aspect of trying out different services and trying to see what's profitable, yeah, I'm very for control tests. I always give the example saying, how much can you lose? So the example I give Raisa and so on, here saying, look, look, I can, I can buy 10 items and lose them. You know, if nothing comes from them, okay. Uh, I'm doing something now with my team, and then we're looking at, looking at promoting something. And I spoke with the billing, saying, "Look, give us money to lose." And of course, you know, finance don't, don't you know don't understand concepts like this. But for me, it's like, how much can we afford? 
they want to do something over a month. Give me something. Give a watch is an amount we 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 can, we can start with. Let them try out a few uh, a few different things. So with this, when we try these few different things, we'll figure it out and say, okay, this works, this doesn't work, these are the costs and so on. And then we can start the plan to see what we can do and so on. But it's controlled. It's not like I'm raising money. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to try with a half a million dollars over the next uh, six months. So that's not trying. That's me just, you know, giving out cash. So that, those are problems uh, to look at. Yeah, there is another thing also because, again, uh, as a health professional, we have to run tests. So part of it was that like, you know, when I want to uh, promote or at least guide my clients to use specific supplements or any, any new products, I really have to test it myself. So that's the money that you are talking about is that, yeah, I might invest in a specific product, uh, sometimes just to test if it's true or not. And through that, uh, mm -hmm. my clients get shocks because you usually uh, get um, a good quality advertising program. And then, uh, especially with health products, they will get side effects. Uh, now they, they learn their lesson now. Uh, so anything they are trying to buy at or purchase, at least they will send me uh, like, you know, the questions, shall I do it, shall I not? So sometimes I have to take this risk and it's part of my work also to build that kind of confidence between me and my clients. And this is how I get my clients, by the way. So that kind of trust, uh, after trials and errors they did to themselves, I got the samples sometimes, but not all of the time. So I might purchase a small package of specific product, test it, get the real results, and then go for it or stop. And through that also, I got lots of good products that I start to use them on my own service. It was through the, the experience of my clients. So I'm using them in the other way for the feedback. Okay, you're looking good. What have you done? What do you use? Did you change your supplements? Yes, no. And we will start to discuss. And then I got lots of good quality products from that. Uh, but yeah, giving up the old stuff, that was the hard part. <laughs> very true, very true. Thank you, thank you for sharing from your experience. Thank you so much. And with that, uh, if you all have any questions, I'm happy to answer them later by email or Instagram. Uh, thank you for joining today. Next week, we're going to talk about why we wave. Like now, I'm going to leave and say, you know, bye. Why we do this electronically as well. So uh, we'll look into that a little bit further on why we actually do this. Notice that on every call that you're in, even with family, it's... Uh, it's the digital aspect of this. So that, that's going to be the topic. It's a lighter topic uh, uh, for, for next week. Uh, so thank you for joining today. And I hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.